Well, another day, another broken sports game launch. So remember, not that long ago, NBA 2K20 launched in a broken state. The progression was just non-functional. There were server crashes all the time. There were a lot of visual and gameplay bugs, long loading times, and uh, they even forgot to change the desktop icon for the PC version. It said NBA 2K19 instead of 20, which really showed just how little progress it's been made from 19 to 20. It's basically the same game with just like a few things tweaked being sold as a brand new product and it looks like FIFA 20 isn't all that different when it comes to that egregious business model. So if you go ahead and look at Twitter right now, you'll see that the hashtag fix career mode might be trending for you. Maybe it's not now, but at one point, this is a screenshot that I took. It was at number three for me. And then for others, it was on number one. And then this is a hashtag that's been trending in the UK where obviously FIFA and soccer or football as a whole is very big. And then right here, there's a, a screenshot of fixed career mode trending at number 15 in all of the UK. And career mode is that single player experience where you get to make your player and just kind of uh, experience the game in a single player format. And it's broken. So this is a sort of a quick list, bullet points that highlight just exactly what's wrong with the game. So Twitter user Career Mode Insider said, quote, clubs are not playing their best players. Press conferences and player conversations are broken. Dynamic potential is inconsistent. Edit player is broken. Fixture congestion and many more. Now, this is just the layman's version. There is a lot more to be told, which I'll get to in a bit. We then have Twitter users like this one right here dedicated to keeping players updated about career mode, sharing their own experiences. So this Twitter user said, uh, quoting the game, you've had a good run so far when the player character was being interviewed. And then this was followed up with literally just lost the first match of the season. How is it a good run? So the interview aspect of this game just completely broken, doesn't really keep track of things or is not functioning as intended. This is another Twitter user dedicated to FIFA and we're basically seeing how the most hardcore of fans are getting ready to give up on the game because it's just the same thing over and over again, year after year, the same bullshit, the same broken launch. Now these screenshots have been getting a lot of traction, making the rounds all around Twitter. So it's basically this huge list compiling all of the issues and bugs reported in career mode. And that list actually originated from this post from the EA official forums. And as you can see, the list here is pretty extensive. And I'd like to go through this and share what exactly is wrong with career mode. So first of all, this post lists that press conference questions and answers are extremely repetitive. There is no point answering the same questions for 15 years. There should have been a large number of questions and answers from where the game could pull off. This has gone stale fast. So this is one aspect of the game that hasn't been updated all that much over the years, despite FIFA charging $60 for every new game as if each new entry was a brand new product, when in reality it's just recycled assets that have been tweaked just a little bit. Number two, editing a player glitches the player to change positions. For example, editing a CM will change their position to CAM or CDM. An edited CF will become an ST and it removes their second position. Also, why can we still not change a player's position to RW, LW, CM or CF? This seems so trivial to not include it. Please add these options to the edit player position lists. So this is something that was highlighted by this YouTuber, Kenny Sports, and you can see right here, basically what this user does is take this player, and you can read here, rating 73 and all these positions over here, Basically, they tested this out, this bug. They changed the player's shoes. And then when they looked at the player again, their stats had indeed changed. 73 turned into 72. A bunch of positions you can see right here are missing, so on and so forth. If you scrutinize both of these side by side, there's just a lot of differences. So that shouldn't be happening, but it is. 
Number three, AI team selection is bad or worse. Top six teams are fielding reserves or substitute players. This is unacceptable. This has been going on for years now with no fix. It absolutely ruins the little immersion we have with career mode. So basically, the top six teams in the leagues and what have you, they shouldn't be substituting in um, reserve players. Uh, they should be at the top of their game, and that's just not being accurately represented in FIFA, and this has been going on for a while. Number four, table realism. Top six are finishing at extremely low positions and teams are winning with around 60 points. The tables are not realistic at all. So again, real life FIFA isn't being matched up to uh, the FIFA games in terms of how the teams are performing. Number five, player conversation are as dull and bland as press conferences. There needs to be a large pull of questions and answers, or else how are we supposed to not get bored of this feature after the first season if the questions are always the same? They also seem to be broken as some players request game time and then respond, I am frustrated I was played and got injured when I requested not to play. So, you know, with career mode, you want to keep players immersed. And for that immersion to happen, every aspect of career mode needs to have as much detail as possible. But it just goes to show that the things like the interviews, they just, they're just kind of half-assing it at this point. They don't really care about updating it or really bolstering it. Number six, there's no risk or reward for press conference interview questions. These just adds to the generic state. Number seven, after a few years, the Europa League does not progress to playoffs and Champions League doesn't get started. When you look at matches played for those competitions, some of them will show up as TBD versus TBD. Number eight, dynamic potential. Even if a player is in bad form, they will still grow in rating. At age 29, 30, players still decline regardless of performance. Had a 30-year-old CAM with six goals and 18 assists after 18 league games dropped two points overall nonetheless. So player progression is broken or isn't accurately being represented. Number nine, when you edit a player, their overall drops as well. So we saw that in this YouTube video right here. So I believe the overall is referring to this number. And then if you look at what happens after they, uh, this individual edited the player, it drops to 72. And that's just something that's been reported across the board. Number 10 talks about this calendar feature that's still not fixed. There's another number 10, I'm assuming typo. If you play on ultimate difficulty, you can beat the AI top teams by four, five, six, or seven goals. So difficulty is just completely broken as well. At ultimate difficulty, there should be a genuine challenge, but it's just really easy to beat the AI even at the highest difficulty by a significant number of goals, which is just ridiculous. Number 11, max height for created players is only 6'2", so there are taller players than 6'2", across, you know, professional football, but that's seemingly something that EA is unable to implement in this game. Number 12, Champions League starts with the 2018 to 2019 teams, not the new group stages for the 2019 to 2020 season. So this is supposed to be FIFA 2020, but the teams that are being represented are from last year's. I mean, what's the point of getting FIFA 2020 if the teams aren't representative of what's going to happen in 2020. Number 13, cannot scout your academy in Wales still. Why is this still not possible, especially for teams who we have national teams for? Number 14, youth academy teams are debuting with tucked in shirts and generic boots still. Number 15, international game stadium fields look horrible. The presentation looks so generic and I feel like there is a filter added that makes the national team colors and field look very bland. So from a visual standpoint, just not a lot of upgrades and maybe regressing in some regards. Number 16, if we create a player, we should be able to edit their potential since we sometimes have to create players that are not in the game due to licensing. Created players should not reach 99 potential. That is ridiculous. And then we've got a new batch of bugs that were reported after this initial list of 17 bugs. Number one, player career mode player will end up with zero star skills. Number two, dynamic potential seems to be working for some people while not working at all for others. Number three, raising a player's wages, even minimally in some cases, can get you automatically fired. This was an attempt to remove the billion dollar transfer budget glitch that was executed horribly. So they replace one flaw for another. Number four, typos in interviews. I believe this is something that was highlighted 
right here in this Reddit thread. Misspelling in career mode conferences, so unacceptable is woefully misspelled right here, as you can see. Number five, a player you accepted a transfer fee on stays in the background of the career mode menu and then stays on the middle of the pitch the whole time. Number six, player fitness is very bad. Even players with 80 plus stamina are gassed by halftime. They only have 50% stamina left and have to be substituted off. Number seven, in post-match interviews when there is a score draw, the interviewer always asks the question about it being a boring match even if there are more than four or six goals. Three to three, for example. So again, the interviews aspect is just the questions that are asked just make absolutely no sense within the context of what happened in the career mode. Number eight, in player conversations, no matter what selection you choose, the player always reacts positively. Number nine, morale is now pointless since all players are happy no matter where your team are in the league or how badly you treat them. So it's just um, across the board, not only a broken mode, but a mode that's been kind of very half-assed for years now. And you would think with all the money they've made from Ultimate Team, from the card packs, from the gambling, from the exploitation of players who might be addicted to this stuff, you think after making billions off of this franchise, they could just put in a little more effort into career mode? But nope. It's the same old crap, and in a lot of aspects, it's worse. And then finally, there's stuff like visual glitches, such as this one. Wait for it. <laughs> okay. Yep. That's funny every time. Not gonna lie, I almost want them to keep that one in. This highlights the Champions League game mode not representing the teams of the 2019 to 2020 season. This is from last year. So that's bad. To finish off this video, I'd like to show you a response that Corey Andrus, who is the global franchise lead for FIFA, provided on Twitter, addressing the mass revolt surrounding this game. Here's what he had to say. Hey all, wanted to take a few minutes and address some of the concerns regarding career mode, some of the action being taken internally, and also speak on why some fixes take more time than others. First off, definitely want to acknowledge the feedback and we have been tracking a lot of the posts and initial complaints on various platforms. The thread from FIFA CM Tips was definitely a helpful one, thank you. Let me say that the team is aware and prioritizing fixes for this area and have been successful in identifying some of the issues. In terms of an ETA or exact changes, I can't provide that yet, but also want to be transparent and say it won't be immediate. Wow. Being that career mode is client-based offline, we need to patch. Patches take time as fixes have to be identified, fixed, tested, and then certified by first party. I love how they just didn't do that before the game came out. Wow, crazy how that would have made things so much better. Our first patch is on the way and locked, so likely we have missed the ability to put CM fixes in that patch. I'm fully aware that is not what you want to hear, but I also don't want to leave you without answers on this one. We are continuing to prioritize and push these issues with urgency, so hopefully we'll have more to share soon. So, uh, yeah. Uh, right here, this user summed it up perfectly. Who tests career mode? Because a lot of these major issues would have been seen instantly. Who knows, maybe the testers did see this stuff, but EA, given how strict they are about their deadlines, despite a product not being ready for launch, they probably just said, we don't care, just put it out there, get it out there, we'll fix it later. And that's sort of been the model for a lot of AAA games. Others are saying here shouldn't need fixing in the first place. Hope you're able to explain why some dude can fix career mode, releasing some mods a couple of hours after the game is released and the EA team can't. LOL did not one test career mode before the release for fuck's sakes. I mean, yeah, all valid sentiments. And this is the same cycle every year. That's the problem. This isn't some first time thing. This happens every single freaking time. And on top of all that, there's really not much progress between 19 and 20 to suggest there's some radical overhaul that took place that maybe caused some of these glitches and bugs to crop up. They're just modifying the same foundation and they still can't get it right or they don't care to, I don't know. And we're supposed to believe that the annualized nature of FIFA is justified. 
that EA can justify asking us to spend $60 every year on a new entry that really isn't a brand new game, but rather an update to an old product that continues to ship broken. Anyway, I've said all there is to say about the matter. I'd love to hear what your take is on all of this in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.